Hi there, everyone. Welcome to the third installment of uh, P Free Piano Lessons and Tips to Survive the Quarantine Apocalypse. Right here. I am Jess from Bread and Gravy, and hopefully you've watched the first two lessons if you're an ultimate beginner, and you'll be ready for this lesson right now. So, some of the things we'll be covering today are the black keys. We haven't talked about them. What are the black keys? What are they called? Um, we'll go over some basics of sheet music and also some basics of left hand playing and bass lines. Uh, we will also be getting very heavily into inversions today. I talked about it last time, I just wanted to introduce it, but today we're really going to be diving into inversions. And we'll play a couple of songs that will incorporate some of the things I'm showing you as we go along. Um, some of them will be, some of the songs will be uh, Let It Be by The Beatles, uh, Billy Joel, She's Got Away, and that's mostly what we'll be covering today. So, let's get started right away. Dip, 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 doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, the first thing we are covering today are the black keys. We've already talked about all the whites. As you know, all the white keys are in the key of C. The key of C always has all the white keys in it, but the white keys aren't always in the key of C. The subset doesn't work backwards. Anything can be anywhere. What do we know already? Bam, 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 bam. There's the key of C, all of the white keys. You already know the letters of all the notes. C, D, E, F, G, starting over, A, B, C. C to shining C. So what do we call these black ones? There's no letters left in the middle. No, there's not. So I want you to remember that first term that we talked about, which was called half steps. What is a half step? The space between every two adjacent notes. Okay, so when we go a half step up the scale, we call it a sharp. When we go a half step down the scale, we call it a flat. So this is how the black keys are named. If you take a C and you go half a step up, that is called a C sharp. Got it? Okay, if you take a G and you go half a step down, that's a G flat. I hope you've noticed already that every key can have different names. Gets a little complicated. But right off the bat, you have to understand the black keys. Most people will refer to them with one of two names. So this key right here could be called C sharp, C sharp, or it could be called D flat. Make sense? It's a little complicated to have two names for one key, but you'll understand why in a little while. So, how do we make something sharp? We take a note and we put it up a half a step. Right there, so that was an F, and now this is an F sharp. So that is called F sharp. Um, it is also called G flat. Get it? Now, if you really get it, what would we call the note if we went down half a step from C? Well, if we go down half a step from C, the next note is right here. There's no black key in the middle. There's no black key right there. So, if we take the C note and go and flat it, we get B. So B also has several names for it. B can be a B note, or it could be called a C flat. Wacky, huh? Now, you might say this will never come up, but if you're learning with sheet music, it will come up quite often. If somebody's writing something in a certain key, but then they have a note that's not in that key, they have to find a way to call it something. So even a C, I'm, I was currently working on uh, Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven a couple of weeks ago, and the C note, the simplest note in the entire piano, was called B sharp. Because you take a B and you raise it up half a step, and there it is. So that is a B sharp, but it's also a C. So everything can have different names relative to the context of what you're talking in. If you don't plan on learning through sheet music too much, you don't have to pay too much attention to this, but it certainly will help you. There's three or f actually four ways to learn on your own. 
Hold on a minute. I'm going to uh, be the star of this show again. As I've said from the beginning, I'm trying to teach in a way that people will be able to play on their own and create after just a few lessons. There's several ways to do this, and different teachers do it different ways. You can teach shapes. You can teach theory. You can learn sheet music and, and, and pretty much type. Or you can learn playing by ear. So those are the four different ways that you can learn quickly to be able to play. And I'm incorporating the first three of those. I'm doing a scattering of all three of those. We've learned the one shape, which is the root chord of C, which we use for the one, four, five, the C, F, G. And we use that root chord with the one, three, five fingers, if they were all on the proper keys. And that would be the root chord, but that's the first shape that we've worked on. I haven't shown you any other shapes. I've talked about inversions but we haven't shown you any of shapes. So shapes is the one route. Understanding theory and how to make chords is another route that I'm touching on. Uh, for the people, and also sheet music, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of that today. Um, and the fourth way is playing by ear. If you can play by ear, some people can hear things really, really well. Um, if they hear them perfectly, we call them pitch perfect people. And my, my little 11-year-old son is one of them. He will sit there and play a video game for about half an hour, 45 minutes, and he'll run over to the piano and start picking out the melody of whatever he had heard during that video game. He's really good at it. So if you're able to hear things and then just poke along around the piano and try to find the note that you're hearing, that's another way to go as well. Or if you can come up with your own melody and start singing, you can sit down and find the chord that works as the background noise for whatever you're singing. So if you can do that by ear, that is awesome. That is not what I'm teaching. I, can, I cannot play by ear uh, for the most part. I can a little bit, it's, a, it's an acquired thing as you go along, but that's always been very difficult for me. So for, the, for those of you who can play by ear, So, back to what we were doing. So now we know what the black keys are called, right? This can be called a C <clears throat> or a B sharp. This can be called a C sharp or a D flat. This can be called a D sharp or an E flat. This can be called an F sharp or a G flat. This can be called a G sharp or an A flat. And this one could be called an A sharp or a B flat. If you start getting into really complicated sheet music, they'll have double sharps and double flats and craziness. A double sharp is represented by a big bold X, and a double flat is represented by a, a picture of me trying to sing an interval. So there are the black keys. Let me show you some sheet music. Look at that sheet music. That is Dust in the Wind. Everyone knows that song, I think. And it's in the key of C. So here's what I show you. And this is a fake book. Okay, you're only seeing one line here. You're not seeing two lines. Most real sheet music, like this, will have two lines. A treble clef and a bass clef. I'm sorry, that's the melody line. This is the melody, they're actually separated. So most sheet music you'll see like this. And there's the treble clef and there's the bass clef. All I want you to understand, you can memorize what those notes are. I think uh, most of us have music class in grade school. And every good boy does fine and for the lines. That's how you remember those notes. Every good boy does fine, E, G, B, D, F. And then the spaces between the lines is the word face, F-A-C-E. But you can see it's all in order once you start breaking them all down individually. Uh, e, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, all the way up to the top. But what does this really mean when you're reading it? I'm, I'm, you can memorize all those notes on your own, plus memorize what the bass clef means. But all this really means, and people who learn by sheet music and are typing, essentially typing, with typing with feeling, but typing nonetheless, they're able to read it and just play it, just like people can read uh, a dictation and type it out really quickly. But all I want you to understand is that there's only one imaginary line between the bass clef and the treble clef. There is only one imaginary line, and that is where middle C is. So really the difference between the treble clef and the bass clef really just means right hand, 
left hand. Now when I say there's only one line in between these these two bars here and you're looking at this and you're saying hey Jess there's three lines right there. Well you'd be right but so am I. Only one of those lines apply to middle C. These two lines that you see here believe it or not are actually these two lines. All they're trying to show you is that they want you to play it with the right hand because with the left hand you're going to be doing this down here. So when er there's never more than one line in the middle that means anything other than middle C. So if you see another line and it's below, see there's middle C, but if you see another line that is just this line. It is no different. Absolutely no different. Sometimes you'll see this reverse, you'll see three lines in the middle and it's the bottom one that's middle C and because they want you to play with the left hand and then the top will be uh, just repeating the lines that are there just like these two lines are the same as these two lines. Well, while I'm on the sheet music I want to show you for beginners and for how I learned you could ignore all this treble clef and bass clef and ignore all that. Most sheet music will have the chords on top of the measures. At the end of the day, that's all you really need to know when you're playing by chords. So, let's go back to this. This is in the key of C. And the first measure, there's, there's a, this is in 4-4 four, four time, 4 beats per measure, represented by a quarter note. So the top number tells you the time that it's in. The second number tells you which, uh, which of the notes they're using to count with. So they're using quarter notes to count four beats, which actually makes a lot of sense and is very straightforward. So it's four beats per measure. Every beat is represented by a quarter note. These are half notes. So that's two quarters make a half. So there's two beats for C and then two beats for the chord of G. I'm going to play that. I close my eyes. Right? Just as it's four beats doesn't mean I have to hit four beats. I'm counting out two. I close my eyes. If I wanted to hit all four beats, it would be, I close my, well, sorry about that. I close my eyes. See? If I want to hit every beat, I can, but this is designed to just hold the quarter note out twice as long. Anyway, I'm getting too much into this right now. I want you to see that on any of these, these sheet music sites or pages or fake music books, you'll always see the chords up top. And we've already learned this. We already learned this in the key of C. So you could already play this beginning of this song, Dust in the Wind. I close C chord, my G chord, A minor. That's the sixth. That's the relative minor. Remember that from the last time? So there's the one chord. There's the five chord. And there's the six chord, right there. I'm sure there's gonna be a four chord in there eventually, right? There always is a one, four, five. I'm sure there is somewhere. But that's all I'm gonna show you right now. Now, you might be asking, hey Jess, what does that B mean? There's a C chord, okay, that looks simple enough. I could play a C chord. What does that B mean? Well, I'm calling it a G chord, but what that B means is it means accentuate the B in that chord. What is a G chord? A G chord, as we've already learned, is the notes G, B, and uh, G, B, and D. So when you play a G chord, it wants you to accent the B. Usually this will mean hit it in the bass with your left hand. So instead of hitting a G in the bass while you're hitting a G chord with your right hand, you're actually going to hit a B if you really want to have the right inflection for that song. You can get away without doing it, don't get me wrong. And you can play very, very simple to start with by just playing C chord, G chord, A minor chord, G chord, D minor chord, and so on and so forth. Hi, I'm the star again. So, that was a little bit of an introduction into sheet music. Um, but especially for us beginners, what we want to look at is the chords on top of the measures when we're looking. And we kind of fake out. That's why they call it a fake book. And you can find, kind of fake your way through it. I did say the word fake, right? I did. It was, I don't have to edit that. Okay. 
you can kind of fake your way through the whole thing. If you listen to the song and you kind of hear how it's going, just break up the chords as the sheet music declares and make it your own. Have your own rhythm in it. Okay, the other thing I'm going to talk about a little bit, not going to dive into it, is what your what things you can do with your left hand. If you're getting bored with all the things with your right hand and all these other things, then I will tell you a little bit what you'll be doing with the left hand. Just a little bit, though. Oh, I'm going to go down here, actually, because that's where the left hand is being played. These are lower notes. <laughs> See how those are lower notes? Absolutely. So, when we did our scales, I showed you that what you can do with the left hand is you could play a chord. While you do the scales with the right hand over there. And you could just hit it on the one beats, or the, the one and the three beats, or whenever you want. If you're not ready to do a whole chord with your left hand, you can just do one note. You could do that one note. But the point is to try to hit it on the one beats of each measure, like count it in your head, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or you want to do the whole chord? One, two, three, four. You want to do a twosie? That's good. One, two, three, four. You want to just use the one and the fifth of the chord? That's fine too. One, two, three, four. So that's all simple stuff. Most of the time when you're playing with your left hand, you're going to be doing one of one of, uh, I'll say three things right now, and I'll probably change that in the future. But one of three things, you're either going to be hitting a single note, or you're going to be hitting a chord, or you're going to be doing some kind of rhythm. When you hit single notes in a rhythmic timing like that, um, usually evenly spaced, it's called an arpeggio. If you like big words that originate in Latin, that's you could show off with that. So there's lots of things you can do with your left hand. If you're trying to build up your left hand muscles, you could obviously do scales. Or you can just practice playing the chord for a while with different rhythms. It's all about being able to push those three fingers down on command from your brain without pushing the other two fingers down. Ta-da! So yeah, there's lots of things you can do with your left hand. Left hand is usually focused on rhythm, whereas right hand is more focused on, on melody. That's a general statement, though. Um, if you are a left-hander, you'll find it easy to do this bottom end stuff um, in the bass line. You'll be much better off here, and then you'll be weaker up there on your right hand. Uh, my advice is if you're a left-hander, and you're taking these lessons from me, um, I suggest that you crisscross your arms like as if you were getting into a straitjacket and just leave them across each other like that and then just play like that. Really, I don't have anything special to tell um, left-handers. I, I try to ignore them as much as I can. So anyway, um, you can <clears throat> work on doing all these different things, whether having a chord with your left hand while you're playing chords in the same chord, on the right hand, or you could do a single note of the root note while you're doing a chord, or like you saw in Dust in the Wind, there was a chord that had you was playing the chord on the right side, and it was the third note, not the one that was being inflectuated. So you can switch it around. You could play chords in the right hand while you're going. So many options as you can imagine. You could work out doing sophisticated bass lines. Um, let's try this one. So you can practice a whole bunch of sophisticated bass lines. You can look in books to find different things and different ideas to do sophisticated bass lines with your left hand. But my suggestion is uh, don't bother. Focus on having fun and doing what you can do. And besides, if you get proficient at all on... Uh, playing piano, then most likely a bass player will start following you around. They're kind of like puppies. So if you, why bother working on a big proficient bass line when eventually you're just going to have a, a bass player puppy dog following you around and he'll take care of all that. And then you could just have fun playing while he's laying down this cool groove on the bottom end down over here. Okay, moving along.
There I am, I'm a star. <sighs> anyway, hope everyone's having a lovely, lovely apocalypse quarantine. We are. It's another beautiful day outside. I can't wait till this lesson isn't over and I can go out and play in my backyard separate from others. So anyway, I said we were going to dive into inversions today and we are going to do that in a short moment. Okay, I'm sorry. This has gone on way too long today. Um, I didn't get into as much as I wanted to, so next lesson, and I'm going to film it right after this, is going to be nothing but inversions and two songs that you can play with all these chords that you're learning. All right, so I'm going to snip this off right here. If they get too long, it's too long to upload. And, uh, you don't care about all my reasons. Um, but I'm going to leave you with your quarantine apocalypse tip of the day, and that is if you have to go out and go get groceries or get whatever you need, Put some silly glasses on, put on a weird outfit, make a joke, make people smile, they need it. Okay, peace.